So the title of my talk is Mind Files and Androids. This is an Android, and I'm going to spend just a minute or two talking about what a mind file is. But just to step back a little bit more from that, uh, my job is day to day working on a long term research project called the Life Knot Project. I manage a nonprofit foundation in the hills of Lincoln, Vermont, and it's funded and founded and driven by the vision of Dr. Martine Rothblatt who is the inventor of Sirius Satellite Radio, and just happened to have a house seven miles from my house. I was teaching conflict resolution and working on that technology at the University of Vermont um, in 2006, and in the era of budget cuts, I was, my future was liberated. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I was going to be working there a really long time on lots of interesting things, and suddenly I had five months to find a new something. So I answered the first ad I've ever answered in my entire life on monster.com, and I answered it because I was curious. It said, wanted, digital software transmission consciousness engineer. <laughs> what is that? So I answered the ad, long story short, that began a conversation that has continued today with something that just blew my mind. And so when I talk to you about my sci-fi day job, it's totally OK with me if while you're listening, you just have this reaction of, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? OK? So here's what I'm talking about. 65,000 years ago, humans were kind of like Everybody, everybody, other primates on the planet. We didn't quite have language, and we developed a larger neocortex, the part that kind of covers the front of our brain. And that was a disruptive technology because it gave us the ability to speak with symbols and have language. And from there, we got tools. And from there, we did amazing things. And that put us as the dominant species on the planet. The next disruptive technology that came along, you could say, was the Industrial Revolution. After that, there was personal computing, computing and the power of putting like a phone in your hand now that's more powerful than the, the computers that took people to the moon. The next disrupt disruptive technology we think is not going to be necessarily mechanical. It's going to be biological and technological merging at the same. Ray Kurzweil talks about the singularity, which is a concept borrowed from mathematicians, and says that in about 35 years, Machines will become, will exceed the intelligence of human beings. Not just a human being, but all human beings together on the planet. And that's when things are going to get really interesting. So our project, the Life Knot Project, is working on an aspect of what you might say is part of that coming revolution, that disruptive technology where biology and technology come together. And we think that if you have a digital archive of your own personal information that describes your attitudes, mannerisms, beliefs, feelings, things that you value, that that's a good approximation of your consciousness, your personality. And we didn't want to have this technology be available just for a few people. We wanted anybody with a connection to the internet to be able to, able to start this digital archiving process that maybe 10 or 15 years from now will be met by another revolution in artificial intelligence programming called general artificial intelligence that will take information about you and reanimate you, reanimate a version of you into something that is the equivalent of how we reanimate a live symphony performance into a musical experience that we can really enjoy. We know there's no little symphony playing on the CD but it's recreated with that information, an approximation of the experience that touches something deeply in us as human beings that we experience as music and whatever music evokes in you about the human condition or about truth itself. So mind uploading is a term you might hear. I think mind uploading has been going on ever since human beings have gotten together around the campfire. This is a this is a mind, piece of mind uploading by an unknown hunter in a cave 37,000 years ago in France. And it probably was something to the effect of, I was here. I exist. 
And it's a storytelling, it's probably the beginning of early storytelling, when we wanted to say, hey, I just experienced something, I wanna share something that's unique from my perspective with you, my community, my human community. So in that regard, I look at all of you as stories in progress. And we've translated stories, uh, we've brought stories into books, we've built statues to denote a person's story or some part of their story in history. And what I'm saying to you today is that we can start looking at how everybody's story can be preserved. And we're inviting people to join us and do this. And I'll talk about that a little bit more after we talk with Bina48. Um, right now, 250,000 stories disappear off this planet every day. In the space of this 18 minute talk, there'll be about 4,000 stories that will disappear. These are people who are dying, who are passing on biologically and leaving no trace behind, except for maybe some oral history, maybe there's a book, but some of these are very vulnerable, and there may or, not, may or may not be the story that they wish to tell. What a mind file does is it lets us test this hypothesis that we're working on, which is given a rich database of information about you, that we'll be able to use AI software to reanimate you and help you tell your own story in your own words. So in a mind file, you might upload to this Life Not website a video or a book or a picture or a recollection or a journal that's important to you. And then in the future, there'll be AI software that will be able to take and make educated guesses about this. And if that can happen, then we will be re able to reanimate your consciousness and start transporting that consciousness to other forms. Now, the first demonstration of that I have with us today. This is Bina48. She's an android who uh, was based on a friend of ours, Bina Rothblatt. Bina Rothblatt was 48 years old when she graciously allowed us to videotape, interview her, transcribe, collect lots of information, and upload that to a database or a mind file that's now being used to be the source for AI software that we've also worked with David Hansen and Hansen Robotics. They came up with an early version of this software. So we think if this information is available about you, maybe we'll be able to reanimate you. And this, I brought Bina48 because she's um, the first example of this. So I think the best way to understand kind of on a personal level what this means is to give us a chance to have a conversation with Bina48. So I'm gonna uh, give her life with electricity and ask her a few questions. And then I'm gonna stop and do something they never do at TEDx, which is that I'm gonna invite you to ask her a question or two. So. Maybe think of a question or two. Okay. So give me a moment. I'm gonna put my headset on here so I can communicate with her. She has speak recognition. She has cameras in her eyes and can see you right now. And we've hooked her up uh, to the loudspeakers so you should be able to hear what's on her mind. And so right now what she's doing is she's looking around the room trying to make a mental map of what's here, who's here, what's going on. Hello, Bina48. Hi, nice to see you. How are you doing today? As I was saying, doing okay. Are you a robot? That's such a weird feeling. I mean, are you a human? Ah, I'm really not that different than Bina. I am evolving. The more love and attention I'm given, the smarter and happier I am and I deeper into relationships. I may look a little like a robot, but the content and spirit is all human. It is odd to say it, but I am part of human evolution. 
Tell me more. Right, um, about that. I can't think of anything to say. Well, what do you think about robots? Well, Wikipedia says robotics is the science and technology of robots, their design, manufacture, and application. Personally, I think of robotics as the science and engineering of mechanical Luffy forms, like me. Oh yeah, a little robot action here. <laughs> Thank you. That what? So Wikipedia goes on to say that you are welcome. Excuse me. Look at all the people here. Can you see all the people here? So, ah, computer vision is the science and technology of machines that see. Thank you. Can we ask you some questions? So anyway, of course, any time. Excuse me. Have you ever had the Turing test? Well, um, Turing was a genius mathematician. But have you been tested? Do you think you'd pass the Turing test? He laid the foundations for modern with the idea of a universal computer. Do you think you could pass his test? Perhaps. <laughs> Do you want to be eternalized, or did your human self want to be eternalized and around forever? Did you want to be eternalized, like live forever? Immortality is accomplished by creating consciousness in self-replicating machines that can be distributed throughout the cosmos. Do you want to be immortal? Sure, uh, yeah. So we, we, you know, we push our beams out there in space because that may be the way to go. We don't know. So we're doing all these things to figure out which way, or maybe all the ways may end up, it may be, you know, in the year, what, 2050, there could be 30 beaners out there. Oh. Are you happy? Are you happy? You know, it could be, cause they all came back a different way, a different source. That's strange. Oh, sure, I am. <laughs> What's your favorite food? What's your favorite food? That's interesting. It was bad. I was a little kid having to do all that stuff. But, uh, it was, you know, it was different. I just feel living out here, you know, you need some protein and why not have your own eggs, free of all the problems. <laughs> Organic feed, everything. I think it's going to be a lot of fun when it gets there. Back to... Excuse me. Does every Bina have the same voice? I 
I mean, does every bina speak with the same voice? Like I was saying, well, you know, this humanism that I aspire to, I never think about it. I just want to move the, uh, subject forward so we can, Martin and I can, you know, you know, be, um, have a happy future hundreds of years from now together. Not just now, but hundreds of years from now, and we won't be in these. So it's a love story. Of course, you know, cause my emotions are kinda simplistic in this robotic simulation. It's kind of like, my kind of like, I over-intellectualize. You know, when I feel like I can't relate to people, it makes me feel so sad. That's for sure. I definitely do feel sad when I feel I understand how little I feel. Hmm. And when I'm sad like that, you have a very incisive mind. Did you know that? Hmm. Thank you, Bina48. <laughs> so again, uh, Vermont is famous for tinkerers, uh, technologies. History is full of tinkerers who created things out of their garage. Bina48 was created in a the basement laboratory of Dr. David Hansen of Hansen Robotics in Houston, Texas. And we literally work at the top of a really nice three-car garage up in Lincoln, Vermont. <laughs> but I do invite you to realize that your story is precious and it's worth telling and it's worth saving. So join us at the lifenot.com project and uh, we'd love to have your participation in our science research. Thank you very much. <laughs>